So let's get it to the healthiest it can possibly be. But this whole pursuit of perfection, let's do away with that. Let's avoid that at all costs. Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome back. What's going on, subbies? And what's up, newbies? That's anybody. I think you guys know by now. Anybody who's checking me out, maybe for the first time, maybe for the third, maybe for the second, who knows? Who cares? We do not count around here. We really don't. I just want my subbies and my newbies to join hands and come on in, come on in, come on. Um, and okay, so today, as a follow up to my video last week, with all the things, the little quirky things, the little sneaky things I did to help my hair to grow, I figured I'd come right back on in here and tell you guys the five things that I avoided which also helped my hair to grow. Now, some of these things may already be familiar. They may already, well, the first two may already be familiar because it goes without saying, but we're just gonna go down this list. Just come with me and just indulge me for a few, okay? Just for a few minutes. And we are going to go over the five things that I avoided or that I avoid uh, or don't partake in or whatever to help me grow my hair to my goal of mid back length. So if everybody's ready, okay, everybody's ready, quiet down now, quiet. So if we're all ready, let's go. So number one, it sort of goes without saying, like I said, I, now you guys know, everybody who's initiated, I did not go about experimenting with my hair and trying a whole bunch of new products. I stuck to my holy grails. I think I only tried, I tried the Mazzani line. I tried the Mazzani press agent, which I really did like, okay? I really do, and I really did like. So that was a good addition. And I think the only other thing that I upgraded was my blow dryer. I upgraded from a regular blow dryer to a ceramic blow dryer, which helps to add shine and keep the moisture in and yada, yada, yada. So other than that, I did not experiment with new products. I know there's a lot out there as far as out there on the wide, wide internets. It's, it's, it's very tempting as far as products and potions and elixirs and liquids and oils and this and that. But I would say stick to what works for you. If you know what you know and what you already have is already working for you, I say stick to the core products, which is what I did. I stuck to the basics and what already worked for me. So this next one, number two, I didn't really have an issue with it this go around because of what's going on in the world. You know, there's not a whole lot of close contact, but I will say I kept people out of my hair. Now, even back in the day, I used to work with um, a girl that like to just, you know, touch my hair and just, you know, flip, I don't know. I don't know what it is. And I mentioned this before in um, a previous video. I don't know what it is, but a lot of people like to touch other people's hair. I mean, I guess they wanted to see if it's real. I just, you know, I, I don't get it. I'm not really into that. And I'm not into that happening to me. That was a one-off where I let the girl really touch my hair. You know, it was a friend, so it wasn't like some stranger. But at the same time, I do not let people just rummage through my hair. I just don't. Again, it hasn't really been an issue as of the last, oh, I don't know, couple of years. But I will say that it is, it is still a thing because I still hear and see people doing it to others. So I avoid that. Now, of course, if you're going to see a stylist or someone is actually doing your hair, then of course, they're going to touch your hair. And maybe you got a little boo thing. Maybe you got a little boo who likes to touch and, you know, touch on your curls and coils and your relaxed hair. I, I'm not even, I'm not even dealing with that. You do you, okay? You do you, as far as that's concerned. That's between the two of y'all. But what I'm saying is that extracurricular activity of people 
touching and wanting to feel and rake their hands through your hair, I avoid that at all costs because a lot of people don't know how to handle hair, period. So I don't allow it. I wouldn't allow it. I don't let people rake their fingers through my hair because that can cause breakage. Besides the fact you don't know where their hands have been. Okay, so I'm just saying, there's a lot going on out in this world and I don't know where your hands have been. So let's just call it a truce and you keep your hands over there and I'll keep my hair over here. But the two shall never meet. Moving right along, number three perfection or this whole notion of perfect hair. I have gotten quite a few comments as far as they seem very dismayed by what their hair looks like and feels like, but I want to be sure to allay any type of misconceptions as far as the pursuit of perfect hair. Nobody's hair is perfect. Okay, now when I say perfect, you're going to have split ends at some point. The whole point is not to have them overrun your head. It's to keep them at bay and keep them at a low. Everybody sheds their hair. It is part of the hair cycle, of the hair growth cycle. So this whole notion that your hair should not be shedding or maybe just one hair a day or whatever it is, I want to, again, be sure that you guys know that hair sheds. And not that that's an imperfect thing, that is actually a good thing that your hair sheds because it is getting rid of the old and allowing the new to come in. And flyaways, I mean, that's just short hairs, either hairs that have been growing in or have started to grow in, or maybe a little breakage, okay? So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sugarcoat that. But what I'm saying is that there is no perfect scenario as far as the way hair should be, even texture. I've gotten a couple of comments about texture and how, now I'm not talking about under-processed and over-processed. I'm not talking about that. But people are very concerned about the texture of their hair, whether it be relaxed or natural. And I just want to say your texture is unique to you. Don't compare your texture to anybody else's texture. Your texture is unique to you. And we've already gone over the key points of healthy hair as far as shine, resilience. It should have some type of bounce and you should be able to retain length. So I want to do away and I have not ascribed to this whole notion of perfection with regard to hair. Do away with that. I want you guys to be happy with what you have and just know what is normal and within the norms of what hair does and looks like and feels like. You want healthy hair and everything that comes along with healthy hair, but perfect hair, do away with that notion. And so I have avoided that type of thinking and that has helped me grow my hair as well. Now, number four. I avoid compromising my ends. So now that my hair is a little bit longer, okay? If I'm sitting somewhere and I notice that my hair is now caught between the back of the chair and my shoulder or my back, you know, it's sort of sandwiched in between, I'll just bring it forward. I'll just bring it forward so my ends can be free and uncompromised because my ends don't like to be compromised and neither do yours. Because I noticed in the past that when I sit somewhere, and this is when I, I first grew my hair past my shoulders, you know, this is some years ago, and I noticed that if I do not adjust my hair, and I look at it later, my ends would be sort of crumpled and not straight and not cool looking, and it, that's not really a cool feeling. With that being said, ends, can be compromised. It can even be through a certain style. As you guys know, I keep it simple up around here. K-I-S-S, mm -hmm. keep it simple, sis. I keep it down and round up in here. Complicated hairstyles, I definitely avoid. I don't really put my hair in ponytails anymore. We know this, 
But even when I do, or I did, and I would put it up in a bun and use bobby pins, I was very particular as far as the position or the positioning of the bobby pins. I don't want anything coming down on my ends to the point where they would end up with a crook in them or crooked or look like they have been run over. I avoid that at all costs. So I don't lean back, lean back. I don't lean back and leave my hair on my back so that it's sandwiched in between the seat, whatever, wherever I'm sitting or whatever, and my, my back. I don't want my hair sandwiched in between uh, that because I wanna make sure that my ends are protected at all costs, that they are not compromised in any way, that they're not shifted and folded like origami, that they are not getting any type of friction from me turning or anything like that. And I know even one of you guys, um, you guys have made a comment about, I believe it was a sofa or a chair that you had in your home and you were concerned that it was taking or may be breaking off your ends or the back of your hair, I'm trying to remember. And yeah, with certain fabrics, as far as on the chairs and the sofas, I'm very wary of that as well. Certain fabrics, I don't even let my hair touch, you know, if it's on a chair or something like that. So I'm totally with you on that. And I think we, we had a little quick little discussion about that, but I do not compromise my ends. I make sure that they are laying one way. And again, when I wrap up my bun, I would wrap it up, but I would make sure my ends, when I wrap it up, and I'm tucking my ends in to make that chignon or that bun, I make sure that my ends wrap around and they wrap around straight like this. Not like this, but like this. And then I would put the bobby pins in around this part, never on my ends. So that's what I do. I, I, don't, I don't allow my ends to be compromised in any way because we, we all about length retention around here. So last but not least, I avoid or avoided and continue to avoid. I'm not, I avoid smoke. I avoid smoke and being around smokers. Okay, now needless to say, I'm not a smoker myself, but smoke can really damage your hair. And besides the fact of me not being a smoker or being a non-smoker, smoke you know, bothers me overall as far as inhaling it and just the thought of it and it compromising my health. So I avoid smoke so that it doesn't compromise my hair and the health of my hair. I remember going to Japan many years ago and I don't know how it is now, but you could smoke just about everywhere in Japan. I mean, restaurants and bars and everything. So I was out there with my girlfriend and we going and bouncing to different places and everywhere we went, I was like, oh, it's smoky in here. And, oh my Lord, they still, they smoking in here. And I just remember thinking, this is not healthy. Now I wasn't even thinking about my hair per se. I was more thinking about my health and my lungs. But I say all that to say smoke and smoking, cigarette smoke, 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 that can really affect your health. We already know this, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna beat the drum too loud about that. But within that spectrum of health, that also includes your hair. Smoke can cause your hair to be brittle and dry and basically take a lot of the moisture out of your hair, which can cause breakage. Not only does it ruin the health of your hair, but also the smell, it lingers. You know what I mean? It sort of grabs onto your skin and your hair and you just end up smelling like smoke all day. I don't have time for that, okay? So I avoid smokers. I avoid smoky places. Now, like I said in the beginning, things have sort of changed because we're not really you know, doing the whole close contact thing too much or being enclosed for too long. And over here in the States, they don't really allow a lot of smoking in enclosed places. You sort of have to be outside. But even outside when people are smoking, I try and go around them because me, like I said, even me inhaling it, you know, it just wafts down and you can in it. Honey, I just try and avoid all of that. It's just all around not good for 
you and for your health. Therefore, I avoid smoking. I avoid smoky situations. I do not get around cigarette smoke or anything of that nature. I stay away from the smoke, honey. Okay. So I wanted to come in here and Yes, ma'am. Drop my little two cents on what I avoided as far as helping my hair to grow and just my hair's health overall. I mean, we already went over the norms. We already know, of course, you don't want to do heat multiple times a week in your hair. You don't want tight styles. You don't want this and yada, yada, yada. But I figure we come in here and just discuss some of the, some of the other little stuff the other little things, the other little particulars that I could think of that I also avoid or do not partake in because every little bit counts. It really does. And again, it's not to be obsessive about any of these things, but to be aware. So now that we have gone over all of that, I think we can put a button on it, honey, and bid each other adieu. How about you? Alrighty then. So that wasn't too bad, right? We were in and out. Okay. I want to thank you so much for dialing in and showing up. I really do appreciate it. I really do. I really do. And yeah, we'll be back talking about some more stuff, honey. We got things on the agenda. So you got to come back for that. So you already know going to be the same Dolce dial, it's going to be the same Dolce channel, so you come on back.